Well, hello again, guys, and welcome back to the channel. I'm Mike McIntyre, and I'm here today with the Yamaha Aerox 155cc scooter. And quite a few mosquitoes. <laughs> and today, we're going to try and find out whether you should buy this bike. Well, not this bike, because this one is my bike, but whether you should buy a Yamaha Aerox or whether you shouldn't. Now today we're going to really put this bike through its paces. We're going to do a full off-road test and a full on-road test. We're going to do some real world work with this bike and see what it can do and what it can't. What it's good at and what it isn't. Because in the real world, that's exactly what these bikes are used for. A lot of people buy these bikes, they use them for the dirt, they use them for the road, they use them to carry a heap of children to school and back, they use them for just about anything. They are the workhorse of Asia scooters. Anyway, let's go have some fun on the big Yamaha Aerox 155cc. See you out there. A fairly steep little hill that one, but the Aerox just does it easily. It even accelerates up the hill, which is pretty good considering it's only a 155cc engine and I weigh about 85, 86 kilograms without any clothes. She's a talky little beast. Handles this sort of stuff beautifully. Rides a little bit rough in places, but the suspensions does a great job of soaking it up. All right, we're on a fairly long straight uphill, or we were straight, <laughs> straight too soon. And uh, we've got ourselves a bit of a tour going through here. Just slow down a bit. There's quite a few. Four wheels, it'll be a bit of fun. A bit of fun on the Yamaha Aerox too. Okay, we're pretty much on the top of the hills here, so that's good. The fair chance that those four wheelers just came from a pretty good viewpoint, I would imagine. Better I slow down, lots of tourists here. Okay, there we go. I'll just go and park over here, I believe, amongst the rest of the crew. All right, looks like I found a little bit of dirt road to play on. Well, it's pretty obvious, but this is no dirt bike. It was never intended to be. But it will handle this sort of stuff no problem at all. That was a pretty rough little patch back there and it didn't even bottom out. These are pretty hard little bumps these ones here, like sucking them up no problem whatsoever. One thing about a scooter though, as opposed to a dirt bike, is that you can't really stand up on them on rough ground to use your legs as a sort of like suspension. You can, like I'll just do it now, it really does not feel natural, comfortable or safe. I'm going to have a look on the map and see where I am. I know I'm on an island, but I'm lost. <laughs> Where's my little blue dot going? Alright, where am I heading to? Ah, uh, yes. More into the middle of the island by the looks of this. Which is fine by me. Good day for exploring. Uh, there is some cloud over the hill down ahead of me. Which looks like it could possibly be rain. And given my track record as far as riding motorcycles and rain of late, there's a fair chance that I'll probably end up getting wet, again, as usual. This is a great little island to explore though. I mean, there's just tracks going everywhere, it's just awesome. If you like hills, this is the place to come. I've got plans of getting hold of a proper trail bike and coming out here and exploring at some stage, and that's going to be absolutely awesome, I reckon. It's a bit of slippery a little bit here. Oh yeah, this would have been almost impossible yesterday or the day before. It's actually pretty slippery even now. I better get a bit of a run up. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, the back's spinning around. <laughs> I'll just stop taking and have a look down at it. <laughs> right. Hey, that was unreal. <laughs> cool. Just found the limit of the tyres. Speaking of tyres, front and rear, on the front we've got an IRC 11080 14. On the rear we've got an IRC 11070 
14. Yeah, so far guys, I'm really impressed with the Yamaha Aerox 155. It's a great bike. There's nothing you really need to do with it straight out of the box, so to speak. When you first pick the bike up, you ride away and immediately you feel comfortable on it. It's just a really nice feeling motorcycle to ride. It just feels so natural and like an, almost like an extension of your own body. And, and that's a feeling you really need to have. It just gives you so much more confidence. And when you get out on the road, you just feel that a little bit safer and the bike feels that little bit more predictable. And at the end of the day, it means it's a lot more fun too. So it all adds up. It really is, for the price, a really good buy. It's probably the most powerful scooter in its class. I haven't checked that, but I will, and I'll put that up on the screen. Uh, having said that, it's no powerhouse for sure. It's only a 155cc engine, but it is really quiet. At, uh, at highway speeds, it's, uh, it's fine. You don't even hardly hear the engine. You hear it enough to know what sort of engine revs you're doing, but that doesn't really matter on an automatic scooter anyway, because you don't need to change gears. It does it for you, obviously. Brakes. Front, we have a single hydraulic disc. This is the standard model, so it is the non-ABS braking model. At the rear, we have a fairly old school setup there with a drum brake, which in my experience so far has proved to be fairly waterproof, which is good because drum brakes and water are generally not a good mix. Overall, it's a big thumbs up from me, and it's a sort of bike you can just sort of do anything with, really. You can go out and cruise on the highway on it, or it's great in the traffic, really nimble. It changes directions so easily and so confidence inspiring. Corners absolutely beautifully on tight corners or open sweeping corners. There's a few roads here on Koh Samui that are brand new and they've got big sweeping corners on and they're up and downhill and this bike is an absolute blast to ride through there. It is so much fun. It does look good, I think, but uh, looks are always a bit of a subjective thing anyway, aren't they? whether it be motorcycles or whatever. All right, a bit of bitumen road or concrete road. I think I'll go left here. I've got no idea where it actually ends up, but it uh, probably looks the better of the two options at this stage, I think. I'll just have a look at my map. Yeah, it would almost certainly be left, I'd say, if I go on with that. Uh, if anything, I would say that they're a fairly strong lever pull required for both the front and the rear brakes, but that's quite possibly due to the fact that the brakes are fairly new and the pads are still bedding in a little bit. Isn't that just beautiful? Look at the cloud across the edge of the, the hills up there. Uh, it's just lovely. When you first arrive in Koh Samui, you're down on the coast and on the coast road right where all the businesses are and you think oh my god what have I got myself into coming here and then you get away from all the masses of people and shops and tourist resorts and so forth and you come inland and not even very far and it's a whole different world and it's almost like the rest of it doesn't even exist and it's just so quick and easy to get to too if you want to.
sure what I'm looking at down there. I think that might be Lamai, Lamai area, but uh, it's not very far away, as you can see. Anyhow, it is getting a bit late, so we'll uh, head down the hill. All right, this bike's just holding now. It's kicked itself into neutral going down the hill. I'm just using the brakes to, to keep the bike from going too fast. So what you're seeing today, guys, is definitely not the sort of riding that this bike is aimed at, and definitely not the sort of market this bike is aimed at, but that's what they use them for in Asia. They can't afford these expensive trail bikes or these purpose-built machines. So they buy the scooter, and it pretty much gets used for everything. Okay, the sign says Island Road. So uh, that's where we'll go. Seating position is really good. It sits you in just the right spot where your body mass is evenly distributed between the front and the rear of the bike. All right, back on the main island road. probably see the instrument panel there pretty basic but it's got the stuff you need on it's got a little clock up the top there which is handy you can easily read it at a glance digital speedo of course one of the strange things and I had to look at it twice because I didn't know what it was is you've got a tachometer this side and I thought that this was something else on the other side but it's not it's just another tachometer <laughs> I really don't know why it would have two tachometers, but yeah, it does. This bloke wants all the road. He's he's in the right-hand lane. He's in the left-hand lane. I'm trying to get past him so I can get a bit of oh, I can because there's a really nice set of twisties coming up, and where this bike really shines. And just to get past a little bit of traffic here. And, you get a little bit of road work here, then it opens up. This is all new road through here. It's bloody fantastic. That's where a bike like this is absolutely awesome. It just steers so well. It's super stable through sweeping bends. Picks up speed pretty good for a 155cc bike. Okay, we're 80 k's an hour. Uh, fairly steep hill, not that steep, but back off a bit now, coming back into more traffic. Yeah, that was pretty much it then. It was sort of topping out at 80 k's an hour up that hill. Probably could have got a few more kilometres an hour out of it, but not much. But it's still pretty good. Most of your work on this bike is going to be in that sort of 40 to 80 kilometre an hour range anyway. And that's where the power delivery of this bike is, seems to be the strongest. And to be quite honest, 
when the traffic builds up as you will see very shortly <laughs> most of your speeds are going to be around about the 20 k's an hour or less couple of fingers on the brake pretty much all the time in Asia in cities in Asia in particular because you never know what's going to run out in front of you or who's going to cut you off so you've got to sort of be prepared for the unexpected all the time and it's not just other cars or bikes or people dogs are a real issue here not as bad as the Philippines but bad enough so you can zip around cars really easy on these sort of bikes like no issue whatsoever the handlebars on these sort of bikes is really narrow so you can see you can get yourself in and out of tight spots pretty easily Well that's it for today's video guys, really hope you enjoyed it, if you did, as usual, please give me a big thumbs up, and if you haven't already, subscribe down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.